Well, today we are going to start doing third cotton. We've got to put a couple of uh, pickup head teeth on this. Chopper head here. I got one broke here, one there. Looks like I got a bent one right there. Oh, just a couple of them to do on it. And that's going to make that work a little better. And we've got a sprocket. The bearing went on on the combine here. That's the sprocket. So we got to replace it. Get this ready for oats. I'm just going to run a grease gun around this. But we've got to put a transmission in this truck 12 here before we get chopping. Hopefully we can get this in by the end of the day. But what had happened to this transmission? This one isn't that old. This is the transmission cooler right here. In the beginning of second cotton, this transmission cooler was dumping coolant into the transmission. So, all them bearings and whatever else like that got all wallered up. And then the bearing went on the PTO. And then, what else did we see wrong with this? Was it not shifting? Not, it wasn't shifting right? Or? It wasn't, or no, it was popping out of gear. Popping out of gear. So we figured we'd swap it out. We got this transmission here from Fleet Pride. It was $3,900. So we're not going to roll a clutch into it because this transmission wasn't that old. And this transmission cooler here is not that old either. So that doesn't make me too happy, but it is what it is. So. Rather than being broke down on the side of the road, we'd figure we'd swap her out. The other thing we've got wrong with this, we've got a broken cross member. That goes in underneath the cab there, so Colton's getting some pieces for that now. Project that we're working on is this green diller trailer. It had um, it needed brake shoes, so once we got the tearing it apart, we realized it needed about everything. Swapped the S cams out of it, new slack adjusters, new air chambers. Uh, we had a wheel seal gone on this back right corner, and um, we decided to do all brand new bearings and everything as well. You gotta pull the hub off to get the S cam out. That's the yeah, S cam is right here. And then being if this is a trailer, it's got the longer ones on there. And uh, in order to get some of this stuff apart, you gotta replace other pieces as well, like slack adjusters, uh, canisters, the ends stripped off of them. So we decided to replace the air canister. And then when you take the air hoses off the air canister, the hoses ended up um, the hoses ended up stripping off too. So we had to replace all of the hoses going to the air chambers. And that's what Kerr's working on now is hooking up the air hoses. And got some bushing kits to put in there, and maybe we'll have this going by noon today. This trailer here is a 2012. Take off. The low point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Alright, we are just going to fly the drone down in behind the barn here on the old side of the road. Got the kids on the rock soar. They just had to be running it around. And Auburn Ag actually just pulled in. And what they're doing is putting fungicide on BMR corn.
All right, we're in the field down in behind my parents' house. This is just a long, narrow strip. There's actually two varieties planted in here. And you can almost see the different color tasseling there in the middle. You'll start to see it as we fly towards the other end of the field that's in behind us. We've got a field of alfalfa uh, right here. And the tracks that you see in there is from when we applied, or when Auburn Ag applied um, bug killer to that. So you can kind of see a little bit of variation in the tasseling there. He should be just about going underneath us. There he is right there. Down and back on this strip and he will be done with it. The trouble with these slight side hills is, is they um, have a tendency to lean a little bit but he's doing pretty good. Not, um, not running on any there. I got a little bit right there. Right dropped into a ditch or something. There's a ditch coming up ahead of him there. You wouldn't want the corn to be any taller with a John Deere sprayer. The John Deere's that is at the maximum right there. As far as being able to get over the corn. But this is a fungicide that we are putting on BMR silage. The BMR has more of a tendency to be affected by northern corn leaf blight. And in order to reap the benefits of the fungicide, you got to put it on at and when it just starts to tassel. After that, you're kind of too late and it's hard telling what's going to happen between now and harvest time as far as the northern corn leaf blight coming in on you. It's really not too awful prevalent in this area yet. But um, once we get into a week or two before harvest, that's when it affects it the most. So you can see here there's a, there's a different color to the tasseling and this is where um, I switched varieties of corn. I actually had what looks like a sprayer track. I had rows of corn that ran out and then I ended up um, switching varieties here. So. We're going to leave him alone. He has got more or less one pass left down and back, and he will be done here. So we better get back to working on the chopper here. You can see a spot right there where the planter was out. And I have low battery on the aircraft. Landing. Well, they've got this just about ready. Be thrown in the truck with the yoke on. Now these hoses, they're already all hooked up. They're all brand new when you get a reman transmission. And uh, we're just getting the bell housing part bolted on along with the 
clutch rod linkage and all that crap. So they're getting all that stuff on there and Travis just got done putting the, um, he doesn't have the cooler on there. I thought you had the cooler on already. He's got the lines hooked up and he's got to bolt the cooler down on the other side there. Don't bolt that on yet. Don't want to bolt it on yet? No. Why? Can I put it on after the fact? Try and put it under there with it on there. Oh, okay. Alright, and then you can see on the transmission jack, that's the crap that came out of the lines that were on that transmission. So they cleaned the lines out and uh, yeah, they're just about ready to go in. The transmission all rolled into place here. Setting on the transmission jack itself. And they're just gonna jack it up. Bolt it to the back of the bell housing there. So another problem that we had on this truck here too, and uh, we didn't actually notice it until it come time to take this transmission out, and we had this cross member. It was broke right here, the aluminum cross member, and uh, they ended up just putting that in here a few minutes ago. So it made an easier job of having that transmission out to do that. So uh, killing two birds with one stone. Those pieces were like two hundred and eighty dollars a piece, I believe they were. So they're just gonna jack this up, get it in there. I'm gonna put a rebuilt PTO on it and uh, hook the gear pump up, which is on the floor right there. And then we've got an air tank or two to put on it. All right, so this job here is slowly coming along. Shoes are all on, S cams are all on, slack adjusters. Now he's just getting ready to throw the hubs on and then the drums as he goes. So another couple hours and this one will be done. Looks like I gotta put uh, four teeth on here. Four, five, six, and then this will be done. Um, I had to remove the stripper plates to get them in there. And Wyatt is spraying the combine on. started drizzling rain and I ended up blowing it off anyways and all the crap that I blew off of it ended up sticking to the side of it. We were figuring out spraying it off anyways, but I see a lot of monkey crap on there and just dust and crap that stuck to the, the wet combine. Um, this got real dirty here during wheat. The wheat was real dusty this year for whatever reason. Well, I had the transmission up in there. This transmission didn't get done that long ago. And we tried cheating. What we tried doing is we tried not they have to replace the clutch. Well, the input shaft on the transmission wouldn't go through the throwout bearing. Something must be screwed up there, so we're gonna have to get a clutch for it. We didn't want to have that $1,600 expense, or whatever the heck it is. How much is a clutch? 
Yeah, yeah. flywheel resurfaced. So we're gonna have to send the freaking flywheel out to get surfaced and uh, get a clutch for the damn thing. But we tried cheating. I don't like cheating, but this is why we don't cheat. It's because it doesn't work. So, but um, this clutch is. <laughs> It's such good shape. It's like freaking brand new, but you know, my thought and theory on all this crap is you, just to replace the clutch. I've even gone so far as to do a reman on the transmission when we do a clutch. And transmission's 3900 bucks, clutch 16 and uh, I don't know, it's just a freaking labor is... Uh, yeah, we got to do the same procedure to get the to replace the clutch as you do the transmission, and we should have we should have known better. That's all. Oh well. So this old transmission here has got trouble. I mean, you're not supposed to have this much movement in the shaft, so we're wondering now if maybe that didn't waller the clutch and I suppose we should have been inspecting that ahead of time here, but live and learn, I guess. So, we're going to have to get a new clutch and then look at the crappy just just the, the, from the coolant getting into the freaking oil. Uh, that's what did her in. So, well, this one's ready to go back. Actually, grab the forklift and we'll send that back with him. Yeah, where'd you go? All right, so we've got the front of the chopper opened up. There's a panel that comes in above the knives. There's three studs that hold it in. And I've got one stud that's broke off. I'm going to try to dig that out right now. So we got that out of there. Um, combination of luck and by technique. So, go ahead, get this welder put away, and then we'll bolt the uh, panel up in there. I was worried that I was gonna have to knock that. It's just a square block, threaded square block. There's three of them on here. And then this panel here, Set up in above. It was in there just like that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put three brand new bolts in there. Oh, 
Okay, so we have got some new hardware to bolt this in with. And these are, yeah. So we've got some, where are we here? There you go. Okay, so I've got some new hardware. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this guy into place here. cleaned out, uh, once it started again, it plugged again, and then what it did is it brought all the haylage that didn't make it from the knife drum to the blower. It brought that material over the top, and it actually wadded this up a little bit, and it caused this guy here to tick on the knives. So it was the last day of chopping, and we had to open the cutter head up just like we have it right now to figure out what was going on. I actually thought I had a knife knocked back. Um, during first cutting, uh, we ran some metal. We actually ran a ratchet strap in and um, we, knocked a, we knocked a knife back and it hit right here on the knife and when it knocked it back, it kicked this corner out and that one corner was hitting on the shear bar. That was the first knife I ever knocked back. And uh, I've never even broke a knife before, and I don't even know if my father's broke one. So, um, I thought, sure, that's what we had going on when I heard that ticking on the uh, last day of second cutting, and this ratchet is freaking junk. Uh, but it was actually this, plate dropping down and just ticking on the uh, knife drum. So we just got to get these uh, bolts tightened up here and this thing's going to be ready to go. Uh, Jared and Davey went to get a tractor and we're going to put solid blade on and uh, then we got to uncover the second cotton that we did that we put in the bunk and we're actually going to put the third in front of it and uh put it in bunk four so we'll get this buttoned up here and uh we'll get that bunk uncovered and tomorrow we can roll right in the chop and pretty good and steady we got just about everything ready to go here we've been working frantically today to try to get the last loose end buttoned up. We went right from second cotton. We jumped in the wheat. I was doing the wheat with a couple of guys and the kids and whatever. And the other crew there, they had been hauling manure. And they've, they've been hauling manure today. We've only got two out of the six trucks running today. Just because we're working on that old Dillard tanker. And uh, got this damn truck 12 with the transmission problems that it had. So we got three guys stop work on equipment. You spend just as much time working on this equipment as you do running it, I feel. So just got a couple of zerks to hit here, and uh, we can close this up, slap the head on it and uh, call it good. Alright, now we're just going to kind of close this up.
There's the bot. All right, so the wheels are all on the green diller here. We've just got those clear view hubs. We've got to um, keep an eye on them. Sometimes it takes a little while for the oil to get back into that back bearing. So we'll have to keep checking that from time to time. He's running a grease gun around everything now. And we're going to be able to roll this on out of here. We've done a lot of work to it. And hopefully we can get a couple years out of it before we need to do all the brakes on it again. So, well, better run off and uncover that bulk. Right, Bob? All right, we are in bulk four right now. This is the box that we put on truck 12, and of course truck 12 is not going right now, so. We're gonna have to load that on a trailer and get it out of here. We're gonna put third cutting in here. This bunk, uh, bunk four goes back and then it turns in to bunk three. These poured uh, bunks that we have, these have 12 foot walls on them. Bunk one is right there, bunk two is right here, and then bunk three actually doesn't have a back in it. And uh, bunk three, comes around into bunk four here. It's an L-shaped bunk that has a 45 degree wall on the back side. So we're gonna uncover it up to the point where it's the highest up there. And then third cotton is, is gonna protrude out into uh, this bunk here. And then we can put uh, fourth cotton in the back side or in the front side of this one and then the front side of bunk three so we're gonna go ahead and get this uncovered and then we're actually gonna chop here tomorrow that's gonna do her for this video we're chopping third cutting right along pretty good right now Got a real nice crop that we're dealing with I'm setting the shear bar on the chopper while I'm waiting for a truck to get here and uh, yeah that's gonna about do it we're running 70 foot and a windrow here the shear bar coming back into the knives there and um, we're gonna be over into the long rounds here in a little bit but we got some good sized windrows here and uh we're happy with the way uh third cutting is coming along here we got some very nice timely rain showers here after we took second cutting off and uh 
Yeah, I hear another truck pulling in here now. It sounds like Jared. But yeah, we got some nice hay here. So this is Cropland Harvitron um, here. And then over in there, we got into some Megatron on the other part of the field there. It looks about the same. So I better get back to the chopper. Sounds like the 900 is coming. so we haven't put the flotation tires back on it. Alright, take it easy folks. Thanks for watching.